Hey, welcome to another Today Matters, our daily devotional in the Word of God. And my name is Zach Wilber. I'm the high school pastor here at Skyline. And there's been a phrase that has been racking my mind the last couple of weeks um, as I've been talking to some high schoolers who are getting ready to go back to school. And that phrase is, I'm offended. I'm offended. And maybe it's not something that is explicitly said a whole lot, and, and maybe it's not something you hear a whole lot, but I'd say implicitly it's something that we hear a lot in our culture today. We live in a, a culture that is highly offended, and, and at least it feels that way. And as I was talking to some of these students getting ready to go back to school, some of the questions and some of the ones that I have asked before, I know a lot of them are asking these as well, and maybe you're asking this question as well, is what is the line as a Christian? I know in Romans it talks about not getting into these endless quarrels on opinion, um, in John, it says that Christians were supposed to be known for our love. And that's kind of pushed a lot, too, that we are um, very loving people. But what is the line? What is the line with truth? What is the, the line with the risk of being offensive? Uh, I know for some people, it's like, you know, truth is like a hammer to them and everybody else is a nail and it's just like going for it. And for other people, it's so scary to present what you actually believe and what the truth is that a lot of people just, I'll just say nothing. I'm not going to say anything. I don't want to risk offending people. And there's a passage of scripture in Matthew chapter 15. If you have your Bibles, you can flip along to that, that passage of scripture. Jesus actually goes through a situation where his disciples say the same thing to him. They say, Jesus, that was offensive. Why did you say that? Why did you do that? So I wanted to read it together today. And this is not an exhaustive list. I know um, there's so much more you could say on how to navigate this kind of culture we find ourselves in. But this is one thought that I think might, uh, might help you if you asked this question before. What's the line or how do I go about risking being offensive? Because sometimes sharing the truth, it risks being offensive. So this is what it says in Matthew chapter 15. Um, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law came to Jesus from Jerusalem. And pause there for a second. This is an official delegation of Pharisees and Sadducees who were not friends, by the way, who got together to go see Jesus and see what's going on with this, with this guy, what's going on with these miracles. And then what they asked him is, said, why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? They don't wash their hands before they eat. Now, on the surface, this is a great question. It's like, why don't you wash your hands? In today's culture, we'd say that's some good advice. Why don't you wash your hands? But this is Jesus' response. He says, and why do you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, break the command of God for the sake of your tradition? Basically, what he says in response to them is he says, you guys are worried about us breaking the tradition of the elders. I get it but why don't you follow God's rules? And he actually is putting it in perspective of, of offense. They're offended that Jesus and his disciples won't do this, and we're about to read more about it. But Jesus responds, well, why do you guys offend God? Basically, they had created a law at that time to get around the rule of honoring your parents um, financially and honoring your parents as it is commanded in Scripture, that we are to honor our father and mother. They'd created a rule to get around that. And Jesus says, why did you do that? You're breaking God's God's rules. And then he actually call, goes farther and he says, man, Isaiah was right about you guys. He says, this is what it says in verse 8, these people, and he's talking about the Pharisees at this point, honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain and their teachings are just, they're but rules taught by men. And just as saying, this is, the prophet Isaiah said this hundreds of years ago and it's true about you guys. You just follow human rules. Now that on the surface again might seem offensive, but Jesus takes it a step further. And the crowd that is there, because there's always a crowd when Jesus is there, he calls the crowd to him and he says, you guys, let's talk about this. He says, look, it's not what goes into your mouth that's going to defile you, but it's what comes out of your mouth. Now, a lot of people go back to this passage of scripture to talk about the dietary laws and restrictions that we find in the Old Testament and now versus the New Testament. But after that phrase, this is what the disciples say to Jesus. After he's called them out publicly in front of people, the disciples say this to Jesus. They came to him and said, do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this? And they asked Jesus, they said, Jesus, that was offensive. Why did you say that to the Pharisees? Why would you say that to them? They're offended. And Jesus' response, after he's walking them through things, he says, look, they're blind guides. If a blind man leads a blind man, they're both gonna fall into a pit. And when Peter presses him on it, Jesus says, look, let's get to the heart of the issue. He goes, it's not what goes into your body that's going to defile you. He goes, out of your heart, what comes out of your heart? He says, adultery, right? He says, um, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. That's what really defiles you or makes you unclean or is sinful behavior. And he says, they're worried about washed hands. I'm worried about an unwashed heart. And he's putting it in perspective for them because, and I think what this is important for you and I, and I to understand today 
and when this, this question of what is the line, while well, Jesus in this passage does not give us a clear cut, here's how you go about responding to that comment on Facebook, or here's how you talk to your, your neighbor who doesn't agree with your faith or things like that. I think the closest thing we get to that in scripture, by the way, is when he talks about us, the golden rule, treating other people how we want to be treated. But this gives us a, a preview into the heart of God, into the heart of Jesus. And this is what I think is one thought that is helpful to, to me and hopefully it's helpful to you, is when Jesus gets upset with them and says, look, you guys don't get it. And why, why he was willing to risk being offensive to the leaders of the time was because he wanted more for those people than just what the blind guides could give them. He wanted them to actually know God. And what Jesus is putting in perspective for his disciples is he says, look, you guys have gotten so worried about the rules and the traditions of the elder and, and, and rules that are of man. And he's like, you've forgotten about the heart. You've forgotten about your relationship with God. And Jesus really came to restore what was broken, not to overthrow the system and, and to be an anarchist towards the way that things were. He wanted to, to, to lead us into a relationship back with our creator. He wanted to restore what was broken. And Jesus is like, you guys are missing the point. And to him, it was worth risking being offensive because he wanted more for those people than what they were currently experiencing. He wanted them to be able to experience salvation in a relationship with God. And he was saying, look, the, 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 the leaders of the time, they're blind. And he goes, eventually that's gonna, that's gonna ruin itself. Their own legalism is gonna ruin itself. But what he's saying is, is they're missing the point. They're missing out on this, this love of the Father. They don't understand the actual truth of what God wants from you and from me. And I think for us, that's a good question to ask when we're risking, do I share this truth, do I not? And it's not, I'm sorry, not sharing the truth, but how do I actually present it with people? It's this kind of question is, what is the status of my heart? Does my heart want more for people than they're currently experiencing? Is that my heart too? Do I want them to know the love of the Father? Do I want them to know um, this, this relationship with the Creator can be had and that they're missing out on it? And I think for us, if, if, if we just started with that one simple question of what is the status of my heart and does it line up with Jesus like in Matthew 15, I think it would help us navigate how we go about this, this offense culture we find ourselves in and how to navigate when it is worth to risk being offensive.